Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilarish. I mean, the guy we are, the Breakfast Club. Now, let's get in some front page news. Morning, Morgan. Good morning, y'all. How y'all feeling this morning? Good. Feeling tired, good, but girl. good. Tired. Oh, sorry about that. You know who else is no, you're tired? Not. Probably former President Donald Trump. He is asking the judge for um, the gag order to be lifted in his New York hush money case. He wants to terminate the gag order against him because the trial is over. In a letter to Judge Juan Merchant, uh, Trump's lawyer said the concerns made by the court do not justify the continued restrictions of President Trump. It also said the case to um, it also said that the case to lift the gag order is even stronger after President President Biden addressed the verdict and witnesses have publicly talked about the case. Now, Trump was found guilty of all 34 counts. He uh, faced a falsifying business records to cover up hush money payments to porn star uh, Stormy Daniels last week. He's set to be sentenced in July on uh, July 11th. Again, days before the RNC's official nomination. What y'all think about that? Should Trump be allowed to talk about this? Yeah, he said he wanted to respond yeah. to Biden. He said Biden, you know, uh, responded, talked about his case and, and, and talked about him. So he feels like he should be able to respond. And the case is over. So I don't understand why he wouldn't I, be able to. I, I think he got a sound point. Case is over. Uh, witnesses have talked about it. We all know about it. He's con been convicted. Let him chat. Mm -hmm. I don't see the problem with letting him chat. He uh, already okay. got right. He already got people riled up. His people already riled up anyway. Let him chat. Mm -hmm. He talks a lot. Uh, moving on. It was two years ago this month that the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, leading to near total abortion bans across the nation. Yesterday, senators heard from a Texas woman who nearly died before she could find a doctor to perform the procedure. Let's hear from um, Madison Anderson some of the testimony that she shared. We talk about abortion, and it is easy to get stuck in theoreticals, but I am a real person. The lives of abortion patients are not theoretical. People will continue to get pregnant when they are not ready or just simply don't want to be. We will always need abortions. This is simply no place for a politician to decide for us. Yeah, well, Madison Anderson of Houston went on to urge lawmakers to protect the right to an abortion. This comes as the Senate is expected to vote today on the Right to Contraception Act. It would guarantee a woman's right to birth control and a doctor's right to provide contraception, referrals and services related to birth control. Because, you know, some doctors are now being um, prosecuted for those procedures in certain states. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you or someone you know has AT&T, listen up. Customers should no longer be facing nationwide issues that impact their ability to call non-AT&T users. That problem happened yesterday afternoon with the FCC saying they will investigate. Verizon also said some of its customers experienced issues in the Midwest and Northeast when calling or texting customers served by another carrier. Now, this marked the second time in three months that AT&T has faced an outage. Did that impact any of you guys? Uh, it did for me. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh, I got AT&T. It did for me. Mm -hmm. Remember that one morning everything was out? We came in and people were... I thought that was T-Mobile. Okay, no, that, no, that was, was at, at, t t t yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, definitely affected. All right. Well, thank you, Morgan. Thank you. See y'all next hour. Yep. And I just want to tell everybody out there, I, I seen on the news, if you live in the tri-state area, we were talking about this congestion pricing that will really affect the country if it goes through New York, where they charge you to actually come into the city. The governor of New York is uh, considering keeping it on hold for right now until mm. they do more research. And as you see, as they started to talk about that, I seen L.A. is starting to talk about charging people, I think, $3 per mile. For every mile that you drive, yeah. So this the the whole uh, congestion price is, is going to affect the country if if it passes in New York because I think other cities will see if if it works and if it works they'll charge you you know obscene amount of money to come to the city. So hopefully it stays on hold. So Does any, do any cities in America currently do it? No, everybody's looking at uh, New York as the template. So mm -hmm. uh, they they was they were going to see how I was doing. I know I think like over 200 cabs drove up to Governor Hochul's uh, office yesterday to actually protest about this because it would it would be uh, it would be obscene it would be like in addition to the tolls and, and everything that you pay already it would be like an additional $15 at a certain time and they're saying peak hours and peak hours is 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. In New York? And, and, yes, 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. That's the whole damn day. Uh, yeah, and, that, and, that, and, that, and that's what pisses me off, right? Because they're trying to reduce traffic congestion mm -hmm. and encourage the use of public transportation. So, you know, you're, you're, you're just, you already make a lot of damn money. And, and, and the city looks... 
terrible. Where is the money? Yeah. Where is the money going? Well, not like only if, that. If, it's not if we safe. Like, if, is, why, why is it not? Like why the is nothing going to the public transit? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see no. what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if we looked like Dubai. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I don't think people would have a problem, you know, paying this more money. If, if we looked like Dubai and if we were a safe city. Correct. But the fact that neither one of those things are happening and you want to charge us more money? Hell no. Nah, B. I'm with Dude, you. This cannot, be, this cannot be something that happens all over the country. All right. Well, get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open again. 800-585-1051. Call us up right now. You can uh, vent. Whatever's on your mind, holla at us. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Now let's get in some front page news. Good morning, Morgan. Good morning, y'all. So, yeah, President Biden has signed an executive order to limit the flow of migrants at the U.S.-Mexico border. In remarks from the White House, Biden said he made the decision after Congress failed to pass a bipartisan border bill earlier this year. Let's hear from the president. We came to a clear, clear bipartisan deal. It was the strongest border security agreement in decades. But then Republicans in Congress, not all, but walked away from it. Why? Because Donald Trump told them to. It's an extremely cynical political move and a complete disservice to the American people who are looking for us to not to weaponize the border, but to fix it. So today, I'm moving past Republican obstruction and using the executive authorities available to me as president to do what I can on my own to address the border. Good. It's, d- 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 drop one of clues bombs for President Biden. It's about time somebody did something about the border. Mm-hmm. You know, if the if Republicans don't want to work with you, flex your presidential power. Good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm with mm-hmm. you. So the move does prohibit migrants who cross the U.S.-Mexico border illegally from requesting asylum once the number of daily encounters tops 2,500 between official ports and entry. Now, the order would not block entry of migrants presenting themselves lawfully for asylum at ports of entry. Now, Biden is has accused Republicans of sinking the border bill on behalf of Donald Trump, who the president says wants to exploit the issue ahead of the election. Polling has shown, though, most Americans disapprove of Biden's handling of immigration as border crossings do surge. So, yeah, like you said, Charlemagne, it's about time something, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's it's amazing how uh, just back in January, you know, uh, people would uh, tell me that saying things like that about the border were, were MAGA messaging. Now, look, everybody knows the border should be secure. Everybody knows the border is a problem. Folks just like how one side talks about it more than the other does. Mm-hmm. Well, the president did something about it. So now we can move yep. on. <laughs> Meanwhile, a grant program with a mission to help black business owners who are women is being paused after a court order cites it may violate the Civil Rights Act of 1866. Now, hear this. TechCrunch reports the Fearless Funds Strivers Grant Program, they've been on the show before, is being accused of of discriminating against non-black women businesses by the American Alliance for Equal Rights. Now, the founder of AAER, Edward Bloom, is um, he also contributed to the efforts in overturning affirmative action at colleges and universities. Now, since October, the grants have been paused and Fearless Fund argues that the grants are charitable donations protected by the First Amendment. So I will continue to watch this case and see how it plays out. I remember them being on your show, Arian Simone and Ayanna Parsons, um, the creators of that fund. Yep. Um, they invest in amazing businesses that are owned by black women like Slutty Vegan and The Lip Bar. Mm-hmm. It's very unfortunate because, um, as mentioned, uh, 96% of white men usually receive venture capital. Um, and, uh, yeah, the rest are 4%. We've fallen the rest. Black women, minorities, things of that nature. So, yeah, can we get a little bit more money? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, it's horrible what's happening to those sisters, man. Terrible. Mm-hmm. Anything that creates uh, black progress in this country, you know, they want to strip away. And, I mean, I, I don't know how you message that simply to people other than saying it just like that. They trying to stop the money. That's it, black people. They're trying to stop your money. They're trying to stop you from getting money. They're trying to stop people uh, that are helping you get to the money. And it's right there, blatant, in your face. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And in a more positive note, an African-American man from Maryland who served as a medic in World War II has posthumously been awarded the Distinguished Service Cross for his actions during the Allied invasion of Normandy. Now, this is in honor of D-Day, which is tomorrow. During the D-Day invasion, 21-year-old Waverly Woodson Jr. spent more than 30 hours treating fellow soldiers, saving an estimated 200 lives despite being wounded himself. 
Now, Maryland U.S. Senator Chris Van Hollen says Woodson earned a place among the most notable American war heroes for his courageous display of valor on D-Day, but never received the full recognition of his actions merited because of the color of his skin. Woodson's son, Steve, says regularly um, says hopefully this will pave the way for further recognition of his heroism on D-Day for saving lives in the pursuit of freedom for the oppressed. That recognition being the Medal of Honor. Waverly Woodson died in 2005 at the age of of 83. We salute you, Woodson. Absolutely. You God bless. God Absolutely. bless Waverly Woodson. All right. Yes, that's your front page news. I'm Morgan Wood from the Black Information Network. You can follow me on social at Morgan Media. And for more news coverage, follow the Black Information Network at Black Information Network and BINnews.com. All right. Thanks, Thank you, Morgan. Morgan. Thanks, y'all. See you tomorrow. All right. Now, when we come back, Bryson Tiller will be joining us. His album, the Bryson Tiller album, that's the name of his self-title, is out right now. And he's on tour, so we'll, call, we'll talk to him next. So don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.